All right. Story problems, yippee yippee, application of uh, all the algebra we've been learning, and they do it all in one pace. Yikes. So, um, again, I encourage you that uh, when you get to pace 1107, it's a little easier, and 1108 is just a review of the whole course. So it's kind of like a final exam, if you want to think about it that way, but you get to practice everything. And some of it will be really easy, and some of it will be more recent, and there won't be near as many story problems. This is probably one of the hardest paces in the entire course. So once you make it through this, it's kind of downhill from there. All right. Here on page um, 20 through 22, it actually starts on 19 at the bottom. It's talking about distance problems, and we know that distance is rate times time. And one of the ways you can um, just kind of remember that, I just had this conversation with some of the Algebra 1 students in my class here, and they were getting it backwards. <clears throat> Now, we, we're in the U.S., so I want to use miles per hour, okay? But if you're in another country, you can think kilometers per hour. But let's say you're traveling at 25 miles per hour, okay? So you're on a country road, not going very fast, and you travel for one hour. What distance have you traveled? 25 miles, right? Let's say you're traveling 50 miles per hour and you travel for two hours. How far have you gotten? Well, in the first hour, you've gone... 50 miles and in the second hour you've gone another 50 miles so at the end of two hours you've gone 100 so what you're doing is taking your rate miles per hour times whatever the time is and it's usually in hours sometimes they're in um, seconds and that would give you the total distance now do you remember seeing this magic triangle before we've used this in some other applications distance is on the top and we'd put rate and time on the bottom in the magic triangle and since they're side by side you multiply to get the one on top but if we ever wanted to find the rate then i would take the distance over the time okay distance divided by time is the rate if i wanted to find the time i could take the distance and divide by the rate so distance over the rate equals time distance over time equals rate or multiply these two to get the distance all right Let's talk about, um, I'm going to jump in here at what I have been told is one of the harder problems. So let's look at question number five in particular, okay? And this one says, how far can an airplane fly from its base and yet return within three hours if its outgoing speed is 600 and its returning speed is 400? I always encourage my students to draw a picture, okay? So we have distance going. And then the plane does a quick turnaround, and we have the distance returning. Now we can call this distance one, distance two. I like to use subscripts like G for going, R for returning. If you're using a truck and a bus, you know, to use DT and DB. So those subscripts help us know what we're talking about. So we know that the distance going is going to be equal to, whoops, the distance returning because it's coming back to the same place. So it goes out this far, turns around, and comes back. Some of the problems you're gonna do, uh, somebody leaves and they head this way, and then somebody leaves a little bit later and they are chasing them and they catch them. Well, guess what? By the time they reach them, they have gone the same distance, okay? So I think in just about all of these problems, the two distances will be equal. I, I didn't study all the problems, but I, that seems to be the case, all right? So distance is rate, so I'm going to call it RGTG, equals the rate returning times the time returning. Now I would encourage you to make a list of these variables and see what is what are we told. Well, from reading the problem, we know that the rate going, the outgoing speed is 600. And again, I wouldn't get bogged down with putting all the the um, units in at this point, okay? At the end, we'll figure out what units we need to have for the answer, but just 600, and then the return speed is 400. Now here's the thing, they, they tell us that the entire trip is gonna be three hours. So we don't know how much the time going is. So let's leave that as, here, here's the thing. We're gonna say TG plus Keep doing that. TR 
equals three. If we add the two times together, maybe this is one and this is two. Maybe this is 1.2 and this is 1.8. Maybe this is you know, one and a half, one and a half. We, it doesn't tell us. Um, but we know that combined, they equal three. So I'm gonna take this equation and solve for time returning by subtracting Tg from both sides. So now I know that the time returning is three minus T subscript G. I'll just leave this as Tg, okay? But whatever the Tg is, if it's 1, then Tr is 3 minus 1. If this is 1.2, then this is going to be 3 minus 1.2, which would be 1.8, right? Well, now you can plug in. We can plug in the 600 times Tg equals 400 times the quantity 3 minus Tg and you should be able to figure out from there, okay? Once you see it set up like this, just solve for TG, then you can plug that in here, solve for TR, and what does the question ask? How far can the airplane fly from its base? So we have to always go back and read the question and say, what question am I being asked? And what am I supposed to solve for? You're, asking, you're solving for a distance. So we need to go back and take 600 times the answer you get for TG, because that's this distance. Now, if you solved and got TR, then you should be able to take TR times 400 and get the same thing, okay? Because that's the same distance. And then we look at it and say, well, what unit should we use? And the problem is in kilometers and hours. So whatever answer you get, just put kilometers with it. You should be good. All right. <clears throat> but I think with all of these, uh, look to see if you can set up a diagram first, have two distances that you set equal. Distance is rate times time. So set up an equation, list your variables, plug in what you know, okay? And then you should be able to plug in the numbers and uh, go back and solve the rest of the problem.